Okay, now let's first discuss about our past experiment. Our experiment number one, laboratory activity number two, the miniature fountain. Okay? So, we used a bottle, a straw, a clay, and a coloring agent. Of course, hand in hand, we also used a hot water and a cold water. Okay? So, for our procedure, we dissolve the coloring agent, then mix it with a large bowl of cold water. Then, we fill the long neck glass bottle with a very hot water. After that, we immediately cut the straw long enough that it traverses the neck of the bottle up to the half part of the bottle's body. Okay, here. Some of your experiment doesn't work because I have noticed that your straw was too long that it has reached the bottom of the bottle that's why the water had a hard time to travel inside the bottle and some of the mouth of the straw was too close to the bottom and some even touched the bottom that's why the air inside is not exposed to the outside air that traverse through the straw okay so that's one of the deficiency i've seen in some of your experiment okay another is that you submerge the neck of the bottle too deep into the water it's supposed to be just the straw and um, some parts of the clay okay Okay, after that, we invert the glass bottle vertically and submerge the straw in the cold water. Another deficiency I've seen in your experiments, that's why some of you doesn't have a strong fountain, is that you seal the clay way too long that the bottle already cooled down by the time you sealed it and you trapped less hot molecules, okay? So, after we submerge the straw in the cold water, this should have happened, okay? As you see in the picture, there is a gush of water. So, let us tackle, why does this reaction happen? Why does this reaction took place, okay? When we place the hot water in our system, which is the bottle, there is a change in temperature which can be explained by the first and second law of thermodynamics. After we place the hot water, there is a transfer of heat in our system which is the bottle again and the energy was generated causing the gas molecules inside gain heat energy. Because of the trapped excited gas molecules, the pressure inside our system increased. The sudden engagement of the cold water in our system caused the change in entropy that leads to disorderliness in the gas molecules inside the system. Now that the pressure inside the bottle is high, the colored cold water gushed inside the bottle like a fountain. And once the gas molecules inside cools down, the pressure inside also drops causing the fountain to stop. Okay, So that is what happened on our experiment. Okay, now let us move to our next chapter, which are the forces affecting conformation in biological molecules. When we say conformation, what do we mean? Okay, when we say conformation, it is the spatial arrangement of carbon hydrogen atoms which can be converted into one another by rotation around a C to C single bond. Is called conformation okay C to C which means carbon to carbon single band okay okay let's talk about chemical bonding chemical compounds are formed by the joining of two or more atoms a stable compound occurs when the total energy of the combination has lower energy than the separated atoms the bound state implies a net attractive force between the atoms okay that is chemical bonding now, there are two types of chemical bonds. One is the covalent bond, wherein bond in which one or more pairs of electrons are shared by two atoms. Okay? While 
ionic bond, on the other hand, is the bond in which one or more electrons from one atom are removed and attached to another atom, resulting in positive and negative ions which attract each other. Okay, this is just a review of those types of chemical bonds. Okay, let's talk about covalent bond. Covalent bond or chemical bonds involve the sharing of a pair of valence electrons by two atoms. In contrast to the transfer of electrons in ionic bonds, such bonds lead to stable molecules if they share electrons in such a way as to create a noble gas configuration for each atom. Hydrogen gas atoms, the simplest covalent bond in the diatomic hydrogen molecule, the halogen such as chlorine also exist as diatomic gases by forming covalent bonds. The nitrogen and oxygen which makes up the bulk of the atmosphere also exhibits covalent bonding in forming diatomic molecules. Okay, as you can see on your screen, there are two hydrogen and then they be, they'll be covalently bonded as one hydrogen atom. Okay, that is how you write that in during your organic molecules subject, right? It is already discussed now. This is just a review, okay? This is how covalent bonds look like. Okay, polar covalent bonds is under covalent bond. Covalent bonds in which the sharing of the electron pair is unequal, with the electrons spending more time around the more non-metallic atom, are called polar covalent bonds. In such a bond, there is a charge separation with one atom being slightly more positive and the other more negative. For example, the bond will produce a dipole moment, the ability of an atom to attract electrons in the presence of another atom is a measurable property called electronegativity. Okay, that is how a nonpolar bond and a polar bond look like. When you say polar bond, they are polar bonded, and the nonpolar is they are not bonded on their poles. Okay, well, ionic bonds in chemical bonds. Atoms can either transfer or share their valence electrons in the extreme case where one or more atoms lose electrons and other atoms gain them in order to produce a noble gas electron configuration. The bond is called an ionic bond. Typical of ionic bonds are those in the alkali halides such as sodium chloride or NaCl. Okay? That is an example of an ionic bond, the NaCl bonding, as you can see on your screen. Sodium contributes electron, leaving it with a closed shell. Okay, then because of that, there is a formation of ionic bonds wherein chlorine gains electron, leaving it with a closed shell. Okay, okay, that is how an ionic bond looks like. There is a transfer of valence electron, okay? There are other types of chemical bonds, one of which is metallic bonds. The properties of metals suggest that their atoms possess strong bonds, yet the ease of conduction of heat and electricity suggests that electrons can move freely in all directions in a metal. The general observations give rise to a picture of positive ions in a sea of electrons to describe Metallic bonding. Such bonds are neither ionic nor covalent since the participating electrons are not localized on the atoms. Okay? That is how a metallic bond happens. Okay? Okay, another is the hydrogen bonding. Okay? Hydrogen bonding differs from other uses of the word bond since it is a force of attraction between a hydrogen atom in one molecule and a small atom of high electronegativity in another molecule. That is, it is an intermolecular force, not an intramolecular force, as in the common use of the word bond. As such, it is classified as a form of van der Waals bonding distinct from ionic or covalent bonding. Okay, let us discuss this thoroughly later. When hydrogen atoms are joined in a polar covalent bond with a small atom of high electronegativity such as oxygen, fluoride, or nitrogen, the partial possess, pa 
partial positive charge on the hydrogen is highly concentrated because of its small size. If the hydrogen is close to another oxygen, fluorine or nitrogen, in, other, in another molecule, then there is a force of attraction, term a dipole-dipole interaction. This attraction or hydrogen bond can have about 5% to 10% of the strength of a covalent band. Okay, remember that. Okay, now let's discuss um, hydrogen bonding on DNA. Hydrogen bonding has a very important effect on the properties of water and ice. Hydrogen bonding is also important in proteins and nucleic acid, and therefore in life processes. The unzipping of DNA is a breaking of hydrogen bonds, which help hold the two strands of the double helix together. Okay, Hydrogen bondings are also involved in our DNA unzipping. Okay. When you say unzipping, it is like a zipper that you are unzipping it to open. That is also how it happens in our double helical shape DNA. Okay. Now, that happens because of helicase. It is an enzyme that is involved in DNA replication. It is responsible for unzipping the double helix structure by breaking the hydrogen bonds between bases on opposite strands of the DNA molecules. They do so by binding at the DNA sequences called origins on DNA molecules. Then they break the hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs, causing the two strands of DNA molecule to unzip. Okay? Okay, molecular conformation. When you say molecular conformation, it is any spatial arrangement of the atoms in molecule which can be interconverted by rotations about formerly single bonds biopolymers such as polynucleotides polypeptides or polysaccharides may change conformation in response to changes in their environment such a spatial arrangement of carbon hydrogen atoms which can be converted into one another by rotation around a carbon carbon single bond is called conformation or conformer or arotomer Alkanes can thus have an infinite number of conformations by rotation around carbon-carbon single bonds. Any one of the infinite number of possible spatial arrangement of atoms in a molecule that result from rotation of its constituent groups of atoms about single bonds. Okay? Different conformations are possible for any molecule in which a single covalent bond connects two polyatomic groups, in each of which at least one atom does not lie along the axis of the single bond in question. The simplest such molecule is that of hydrogen peroxide, in which the true hydroxyl group can rotate with respect to one another about the axis of hydrogen, about the axis of the oxygen bond. Okay? That is oxygen to oxygen bond. Okay. Now, okay, in, in general, every distinguishable conformation of a molecule represents a state of different potential energy because of the operation of attractive or repulsive forces that vary with the distances between different parts of the structure. If these forces were absent, all conformations would have the same energy and rotation about the single bond would be completely free or unrestricted. If the forces are strong, different conformations either greatly in energy or stability. The molecule will ordinarily occupy a stable state, one of low energy, and undergo a transition to another stable state only upon absorbing enough energy to reach and pass through the unstable intervening conformation. Okay? I wrote it word by word in this presentation so you can understand what I am saying. Okay? In the intermolecular forces in ethane, for example, are so weak that their existence can be inferred only from subtle effects on the thermodynamic properties such as enthalpy and entropy. Even if internal rotation in ethane were severely restricted, its three most stable conformations are indistinguishable. Okay? The molecular structures of certain more complex compounds, however, impose such a strong barriers to rotation that stereoisomeric forms differing only in conformation are stable enough to be isolated. Okay, now let's talk about intermolecular forces. 
the term intermolecular forces is used to describe the forces of attraction between atoms, molecules, and ions when they are placed close to each other. This is different from intramolecular forces, which is another word for the covalent bonds inside molecules. Okay? Intra means inside the molecule, while inter is between two molecules. Okay? Intra is about the chemical bond, while inter is the attractive force between the elements. Okay? Now, intermolecular forces, on the other hand, you can also define it as a attractive force okay when you say attract it attracts two molecules to combine so they can be com compounds okay? okay let's talk about electrostatic forces it is same as the charge forces or the charge charge forces non-contact forces that they pull or push on object without touching them rubbing some materials together can result in something called charge being moved from surface to the other okay that is electrostatic forces let's talk about column's law the interaction between charged object is a non-contact force that acts over some distance of separation charge charge and in distance every electrical interaction involves a force that highlights the importance of these three variables Coulomb's law states that oppositely charged species attract each other now there are different types of intermolecular forces um intermolecular forces in order of weakest to strongest so the weakest is the dispersion force then dipole dipole force hydrogen bond and the strongest of all is ion dipole force but let's talk about the three first forces okay dispersion forces is if these atoms or molecules touch each other dispersion forces are present between any of them for example consider london dispersion forces between two chlorine molecules that is an example of a dispersion forces now let's talk about london dispersion force it is the weakest intermolecular force the London dispersion force is a temporary attractive force that results when the electrons in two adjacent atoms occupy positions that make the atoms form temporary dipoles. This force is sometimes called as induced dipole, induced dipole attraction. Okay. Now, let's talk about dipole-dipole forces naman. Dipole-dipole forces is an attractive force between the positive end of the polar molecule and the negative end of another polar molecule. Dipole-dipole forces have strength that range from 5 kJ to 20 kJ per mole. Okay, a permanent dipole-dipole attraction is when polar molecules contain polar bands that are arranged asymmetrically around the central atom. So the charge is not evenly distributed. Thus, polar molecules have permanent dipoles. In addition to the weaker temporary dipole, which all molecules have. What is a hydrogen bond again? It is a hydrogen bond that is an intermolecular force, or IMF, that forms a special type of dipole-dipole attraction when the hydrogen atom bonded to a strongly electronegative atom that exists in the vicinity of another electronegative atom with a lone pair of electrons. Intermolecular forces occur between molecules. Okay? Now, ito try kong ipaliwanag sa inyo na mas maiintindihan nyo itong tatlong bonds na to. Okay? Let's go back to the first one. Okay, let's try to discuss this with easier words. Okay? Who among you have watched Inter Barangay Basketball? Okay? It is called Inter Barangay kasi iba-iba yung league or barangay na nagkakaroon ng liga. ba? Kaya Inter Barangay. Or International Beauty Contest. International kasi ba iba-ibang country ang naglalaban-laban. There are different countries who fight for a, for a crown. So that's why it's International Beauty Contest. Okay? Now, because it is intermolecular, there is a lot of molecules involved in it, okay? So now, when we say intermolecular forces, those are forces 
na nag-uudyok para ma-attract sa isa't isa. Okay? Those are intermolecular forces. Forces na nag-uudyok para ma-attract ang molecules sa isa't isa. So, where does this London dispersion force comes from? Okay? Okay, let's say you have two neutral atoms. And it has protons and neutrons in the middle. Okay? It has protons and neutrons in the middle. And there are electrons around it. Okay? Since neutral sila, paano sila nagkakaroon ng forces of attraction? How are they attracted to each other even though they are not dipole? Hmm. So this is how it works. Electrons are molecules that is not just bystanders or hindi lang sila nag stay sa isang lugar. So we imagine that dahil lang super likot nila and they are not stable, some of them are moving on one side, okay? Some of them moves on one side, okay? From this, okay? From that, from, from kanina, they'll be looking like this. Punta sila sa isang lugar. Okay? Dahil sobrang likot ng mga yan, most of them were going on one side. Okay, imagine that when that happens, this side became slightly positive and this side became slightly negative. Now, we call this instantaneous dipole. And it will not be permanently like that. Okay? Now, when that happens, the molecules from this side or yung mga katabi niyang molecules will now recognize that they are now slightly positive. So, magtatak sila ni. Bakit yung mga katabi natin positive na tayo, negative pa din? Of course, dahil maarte sila, they'll say, masyado nang maraming positive dito. Let's go on the other side, lipat tayo. So, from here, lipat na lang sila sa other side. Kaya ngayon na ito, magkakaroon sila ng instantaneous dipole. Kasi nari, ito, dami nilang positive dyan. Some of them will move na here. So, they'll have, neg they'll have more negative na. Ito, that is instantaneous dipole. Okay, drawing natin maigi. Para hindi tayo magkalituhan lahat. <laughs> okay, those is the two types of neutral Molecules, then that. Okay, di ba nga, dahil nag-move yung isa dito, and uh, because of that, they became positively charged, tapos dito yung ibang negatively charged, and then, dahil napansin nga nitong isa, na lahat naman na is negatively charged, ay positively charged, they move naman sa other side, and they became more positive. Okay, this is negative and this is positive. And I'm sorry, because of that, they attract, they'll be attracted to one another. Because of the positive and negative charge. Now, yung force na nag-attract dahil dyan sa movement nila na yan, kaya sila nag-change ng, ng charge from negative to positive and positive to negative, is what we call the London dispersion, fo dispersion force, okay? And the London dispersion force is the weakest intermolecular force. One reason bakit siya weakest is dahil hindi naman permanent. Yung instantaneous dipoles niya, hindi siya permanent, di ba? Kasi nag nag galing lang naman yung mga poles na yan dun sa reaction nitong mga, mga electrons sa loob. Diba? Kaya sila naging negative and positively charged. And dahil dun, yung, yung force or yung lakas ng London dispersion force of, the, of attraction is depending on the electrons itself. Okay, let's now move on to the other types of forces. Now we understand London force, dispersion force better. 
Okay, I hope so. To dipole, dipole. Okay. Now, from the word itself, dipole, dipole, papasok na dito yung importance of polarity. Always remember that only polar molecules experience dipole, dipole forces. Those nonpolar molecules, of course, they're nonpolar sila, they don't experience this, okay? Siyempre, wala silang dipole molecules, eh. So, wala silang polar. That's why they don't experience it, okay? For example, this oxygen. Those oxygens are inhaled by us, di ba? This is what we inhale, oxygen. So, nonpolar siya kasi evenly distributed yung mga electrons niya. It doesn't have dipole, okay? While this water molecule, the water molecule or H2O that we drink is a polar molecule. Yung electron niya is not evenly distributed, okay? That is why it has a slightly positive and a slightly negative part, okay? Therefore, meron siyang dipole, di ba? Kaya mga polar molecules lang na gaya ng water or H2O ang nakaka-experience ng dipole-dipole force, okay? Simple lang, think of a magnet. The positive sides are just attracted to the negative sides, okay? And that is why there is surface tension. If like if you can imagine a water molecule, di ba? It's like this, Okay? Diba? It's like Mickey Mouse, okay? This side is slightly positive and this side is negative. Kasi on that side of the positive side, exposed na exposed yung proton doon, okay? While on this side, exposed na exposed naman yung mga electrons ng oxygen. Now, of course, pag nagtabi-tabi yung mga yan, yung mga water molecules, okay? Yung mga... Negative is na attract sa mga positive na side. Okay? Gets? Gets ba natin? Okay? Okay, ganyan. Basta ganyan. Imagine nyo na lang. Diba? Kung imagine nyo ganyan siya, tapos dito may kokonek na naman na ibang molecule. Tapos ito, syempre ito may negative din siya. Nag-connect siya dyan sa positive na parang tenga-tenga ni Mickey Mouse. Okay. Diba? Pag ganyan, di naghihilaan sila. Diba? Naghihilaan sila. Okay? Nag they pull each other. Because of that, para silang nagkakapit-kapit. Like, they are hand, ay, they are nagkakapit-kapit. Okay? So, they become intact. Like that. And that is how water tension happen. Okay? Kaya na-imagine nyo ba kung bakit bilog, bilog yung water droplet? Kasi yung mga molecules ng H2O dun is nagkakapit-kapit and then they form a surface tension. Okay? Now, let's talk about hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bond is also a type of a dipole-dipole force. And it is the strongest force of a dipole-dipole force. So basically, a hydrogen bond is a bond in hydrogen and electro and a highly electronegative atom. It's specifically nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. For example, this ammonia it is composed of three hy hydrogens and a nitrogen. Okay, disregard this picture on the right. This one. Let's uh, draw it. Okay. Imagine this is NH3. Okay. NH3 because there are three hydrogen and one nitrogen. Ammonia to ha, guys. Okay. And then one side is highly negative. Okay. One side is highly negative, and this side is. Slightly positive. Okay? Slightly negative siya banda dito sa nitrogen. And dito sa hydrogen part is slightly positive naman siya. Okay? Na-imagine nyo? And because of that, ma-attract yung mga positive sa negative and yung negative sa positive. 
diba? sa other molecules din ng nitrogen. And because of that, we call that bond as hydrogen bond, okay? So, imagine, dun sa ammonia or yung NH3, merong nakapalibot na water molecules. So, I mean to say, those hydrogens from that water molecules will also bond on that ammonia because they both have hydrogens. Okay? So, nuggets natin, no? Mas madali. Okay. That is our lesson for today. I hope may naintindihan kayo. Ano na lang ganito, if you don't understand anything and you feel the need to research, do as you, as you need, okay? Because this learning will come from you naman, okay? If you don't understand anything, do some research, okay? At I was here to supplement you or guide you to your study, okay? And thank you for watching and I hope you really listened to everything and then I'll see you next meeting, okay? Probably it'll be recorded again, okay? So if you have questions, just post them on the team so others can also see, okay? Thank you and have a good day, guys.